After the confusion of languages at Babel, many generations pass before the Bible picks up and records God's intervention in history. All through these passing years, God did not forget His promise to send the Deliverer. Though the majority of people lived with little thought of God, each generation records those who believed His words. One such couple was Abram and Sarai. Now Sarai was barren. She had no children. Abram's hometown was the city of Ur, just south of Babel. However, following God's instructions, he had left home and moved to Iran with his nephew Lot. It was here that God spoke to him a second time. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country and go to the land I will show you. So Abram left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. For Abram, this was a big step. He couldn't consult an encyclopedia and research the country, nor could he discuss plans with a travel agent. He didn't even know where he was going. God had not told him. As he traveled, he'd have to put his faith in God to lead him one day at a time. His unknown destination was Canaan, which is modern-day Israel. So they came to the land of Canaan, and there he built an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. Because Abram believed God to be his Savior from sin's consequences, he offered a blood sacrifice on an altar as an atonement covering for his sin. Although the animal offerings were only a picture of what was needed for sin to be removed, Abram's sacrifice was clear evidence that he recognized the need to have a substitute pay the death penalty for him. He was trusting God just as Abel, Noah, and all the other righteous people had done in the ages past. Now, Abram lived a semi-nomadic life, traveling from place to place, probably living in a tent similar to this one. The local people called him a Hebrew, a name which carried the connotation of a wanderer or the one from beyond. Because Abram spent a lot of time in one area, the local town took on the name Hebron or Hebron. From this time on, Abram and his descendants were referred to as Hebrews. God also gave Abram four specific promises. Listen to them. I will make you into a great nation. I will make your name great. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. God's first promise to Abram was good news. In order to become a great nation, he would have to father children. But since he had no offspring, it must have been very perplexing how this could all be. Sarai was past childbearing age, but God had promised, so it must be. Now, this last promise, the fourth promise, hinged on the first and was a direct reference to the Deliverer. God was telling Abram that one of his descendants would be the Anointed One and that he would be a blessing to everyone. Now, the Bible says Abram believed God and rejoiced at just the thought of seeing the day of the Deliverer's arrival. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? God took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. Now you can imagine the impact this had on Abram. This last sentence is loaded with meaning. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at three different words that have far-reaching implications. They are the words righteousness, credited, and belief. Righteousness, credited, and belief. And uh, the last word, the word belief, is uh, so important, I'm going to commit an entire session to it. And we'll look at that in our next session. Uh, we'll look at the first one, the word righteousness. 
Now, we saw earlier that the word righteousness is used in reference to God's perfection, that He is flawless, He is holy, He is pure, He is clean, He's totally without blemish or sin. And that's what we need to be thinking of when we think of the word righteousness. Now, the second word, credited, carries the thought of settling a monetary account through a payment. And that term, of course, has common usage today in our financial world. We like seeing money credited to our bank account because it means we've been on the receiving end, doesn't it? But what does the Bible mean when it says, Abram believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Remember that certificate of debt that every human has as a result of sin. Well, Abram had one too. It was like God was saying this, Abram, because you are trusting me, I'm going to make an advance payment on your sin account. And because I'm giving you my righteousness, it will not only take care of your sin debt, but it will fully provide you with all the perfection that you need to live with me in heaven. You can consider your sin debt as paid. It was just like God was saying that. And you know what? The Bible says, the Bible says that Abram had such confidence in God keeping his word that he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Abram was looking forward to living with God in heaven. Although Abram's body would eventually die, Abram would not experience the horrific penalty associated with the second death. He knew he would live forever with God in heaven. Now, earlier on, we asked that two sides of the same coin question. How can we get rid of our sin and gain a perfection, a righteousness that is equal to God's righteousness so that we can be accepted in His presence? Just how can we do that? Well, for Abram, the answer was simple. Trust the Lord, believe His promises, and God will provide what is needed. <laughs> Two key words, righteousness and credited. Hmm, yes, uh, very important words in the Bible. And actually, the words are very closely connected with the plan that God devised to deliver us from the consequences of sin. And we will understand the story more as we progress. 